Hello everybody once again to Sterling Systems Tech Tip of the Month for October. Now, there's been some discussions out there lately that have talked on the purpose of revision clouds and how to basically modify them and use them to our advantage. A lot of comments have also come up saying that we can use them without being scheduled. Well, I agree we can use them being without scheduled. But what's the purpose of not having your revisions cloud scheduled? We need to have the availability to to know when our revisions are uh, scheduled. If you don't, then what's the purpose of having them? Uh, just having the cloud on there with a number doesn't allow you much authority to have a revision cloud on there. So I would suggest that we not go that route. That is not suitable for the architectural field or any field for that matter. So I do discourage the use of revision clouds without being scheduled. I do want to do a couple of tips here that the people that may not know with it very well can learn from this. Uh, those of us that have used it fairly well and for a, a good time will know what I'm going through. It's just uh, the basics of revision clouds and their use and being able to discuss how to use the sheet view or project view of your schedule. So the first purpose that we have is revising our sheets. Well, I'm on a sheet. I've put a quick schedule together of a, a plan that I've made for a shed, just kind of a, a box and you know, a little barn shed here and we want to go to the the view to manage our revisions first so under your sheet composition tab panel here we want to go to our sheet issues and revisions and you'll notice that there's always one revision set up you can add multiples as you go along you cannot delete them however when you go to one you can merge it up to the next one and you'll get this message every single time so do this a couple times back to get to our first revision You'll see the options here of their numbering per project or per sheet. Uh, it's defaulted to per project and when you change that you always get that message saying that it will change all your revisions that you have out there. So we're going to start off with the default and you also have several options here for your alphabetic tells you how you want it numbered and, and lettered. So as we go along here we'll put in our information here just as you would anything towards the schedule part of it, who you're revising it, when you're revising it, who you're sending it to, who you're issuing it to, and who did the issuing. Uh, you have the ability to show the cloud, the tag, or the cloud and tag, or none. So, uh, you know, leave it to the default cloud and tag for right now. So we hit OK. And I'm just going to put a basic revision cloud on here. So we're going to go to the add and take, and we'll have the revision cloud and I'm going to start here and I'm just going to you know, say we changed the end of this nothing was done just putting in an annotation revision cloud nothing's done however other than having revision one coming up and popping up in your revision schedule it's not even tagged yet so we need to go to the annotate tag by category uh, choose to whether have a leader on which will pull a leader in there for you uh, I don't like that sometimes, so I've done here. Now I've previously gone in here and changed the colors of my revisions, uh, clouds, and the triangle. Uh, the visual visibility graphics can be done that way uh, on a per case basis. Simply going into the annotations and going to your revision cloud tags and clouds. If you do choose it to do project wide, you have to go to your manage. Go to your object styles and do it through your annotation objects here. And you'll see that we have revision clouds being red and clouds being green. That'll do it project wide. Okay. So as you can see, per project, we now have revision one in the description, revision one in the date. I'm not going to worry about filling those in because that's pretty self explanatory. Okay, so we go in and we issue this revision. So let's go back to our view. 
and let's issue once we issue a revision no other change can be done to those revision clouds or the dates or the description of that cloud so uh, we could actually come in here and try to change the properties and they're grayed out so let's go ahead and add another issue and let's you know revise something different here on the roof over here now this will go for uh, just a, a side note this will work in your views you know let's just say I double click in here and it's going to open up my view for me so you can tell it's, everything else is grayed out so we will go to our annotate revision cloud and this will be my revision 2 alright we'll finish that annotate and it automatically goes to my second end line so it knows that revision 1 was issued and uh, we now move to revision 2 so let's deactivate that I'm going to put another revision cloud on uh, this portion up here but let's just say I've already done that detail on the other view and this just is going to be the key because that, that section changed we'll finish that go to annotate and simply place another tag on there so that's the same revision you'll notice that this revision is on my sheet view uh, let my computer catch up here it seems to be thinking let's just go cancel here there's my revision cloud and we could change that we can't change it to sequence one because it's already been issued it's going to give us that warning there so if we need that to go back to our revision one we have to come back in here and unissue and check that and then come back in here and change it to our issue one it changes everything very nicely for us okay so <clears throat> I've got this one sheet up let's just go to our next sheet and I'm going to issue issue number two on here and we're going to cloud this roof here because that's the roof that changed and I could go ahead and do both of them but I'm just going to do this one quite simply right now and we're going to say that's sequence number two because that's what we did right that was revision number two alright so you notice I mentioned something earlier about the project versus sheet view here we have project view already and we know that we have two revisions right here we have one revision but it's revision number two issued on such and such date if we go through and change this numbering to per sheet hopefully you've kind of figured this out if we do it per sheet you're only going to get the revisions that are on that sheet so take away all your project revisions and only issue it per sheet sometimes this is handy sometimes it's not the default per project is usually uh, discipline wide that we like to have you want to know which revision is on which seat so you're not going to do the per sheet view so when we switch this it's going to renumber it all together and as you'll see here on this sheet on my left here it changes it to number one it still keeps the description still keeps the date but however you're still left with the description one so if you were referencing this sheet and this sheet you would get confused if you were not looking at the description and the date so this you know right here is something to watch out for and to make sure that everything is taken care of uh, prior to your scheduling of your revisions and to make sure that you either want a per sheet or a project view numbering system
a good point to bring across is that some people have been wanting to put revision clouds on their 3D views. It, that is not possible, even under a locked uh, view 3D, locked 3D view. Sorry. So there will be possibly a chance to where if you want to make a revision on the 3D, you will have to manually draw in a cloud. That portion I do agree with, but I do not agree with tagging it. That references your revision clouds and your schedules and it will not pull up on a sheet if you do have that 3D view on a sheet. That portion will be left to a sheet view. I wouldn't reference the 3D view at all or I wouldn't cloud the 3D view at all. I would go into the sheet that it is labeled on and, and do the cloud on the sheet and leave it that. So that portion is capable of being done in that manner. I just wanted to bring this uh, to everybody's attention and especially to get something out there for the, the guys that are just now learning Revit. And it's kind of a, a, a good help to have this reminder every once in a while and a couple of pointers on the way and be able to tell you what can and can't be done. So hope this has helped everybody out. We appreciate you listening and, and paying attention to our newsletters and, and blogs and our tech tips. So with this, I'll leave you and have a good day.